Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Let's just wait, please, a couple of minutes so everyone have the chance to join the webinar. We can start all together. Thank you. Just a couple of more, a few seconds and we can start. Let's just give the opportunity for everyone to join this webinar. Thank you for waiting. All right. I think we're ready to go. So good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Thanks to to everyone for joining today's webinar for the University of London Bachelor of Science in Computer Science program with Coursera. My name is Pedro and I am an enrollment counselor. Joining me today are Nisha and Diana, fellow enrollment counselor from Coursera, who will be monitoring the live chat for your questions. We also have Alexis joining us from marketing, who will be monitoring the slides. I'm also very excited to announce that we have our guests from the University of London, the program director, Dr. Matthew Yi King, joining us in today's webinar. In today's webinar, we have a lot to cover. We will start with an exciting interview with the program director, where we'll be discussing most important questions when considering a study alternative. Then, we continue with the program overview where you will get to learn more about the program structure and what the online format looks like. We will then delve into the application and registration processes, tuition fees, and we will end off with a live Q&A session with the program director who will be answering some of your questions. So as the presentation goes, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A chat box. If you have any specific question for the program director, please label it for him so we can discuss it when the time comes. We'll be answering some of the questions immediately and some other question will be saved for the end, so please be patient. So before we start, we have a short video clip for you to watch from Kyle, a current student on the program. He was our guest start in one of our previous webinars. If you would like to watch what he said in the previous webinar, Nisha will be dropping this into the chat box below. So let's see. When I was 14, I fell in love with video games. I looked online to see if I could find any courses that offered computer science or games development. I'm getting my bachelor's degree online from the University of London on Coursera. It was affordable and just having that flexibility was really nice. There are so many things that you could be and if you want to be it, you could be it on Coursera. To earn your degree from a world-class university online, apply today at Coursera.org. Fantastic, that looks really interesting. Now, I'm pleased to announce to you that we have a very special guest for today. I'm excited to introduce the program director, Dr. Matthew Yi King. Hi, Matthew. Thank you very much for joining us today. How are you doing? Hello, Pedro. Great to, great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Looking forward to answering some live questions and some uh, of what you might call FAQs as well. Our pleasure. It's an honor to have you here. So. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today and join our webinar once again. We are very excited to have you here, and I know the students have been looking forward to this too. Well, we have some uh, great questions for you. However, before we start, we would like to poll the audience to see where they are in their academic journey. Some of you may have already joined the program. While for others, this is the first step in their exploration of their educational possibilities, or they have been thinking about this for a while. So this way we can provide with some more useful insights during the webinar. 
So please uh, take your time and please um, answer the poll accordingly. Perfect. Thank you very much for taking the time to participate in the poll. It seems we have learners from different or at different stages on the academic journey. We will make sure to provide some additional information that could be helpful for anyone. So saying this, we're ready. So let's begin, shall we? Perfect. So we have prepared a set of questions that hopefully will provide the audience with additional information about the program and address most common questions if students have. So just to break a little bit the ice, we would like to start by asking you, Dr. Matthew, what sets this program apart from others in the field? Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So I think I'm going to take I'm going to take a computer scientist approach to this question, if you don't mind. And I'm going to talk about yes, input processing and output. Right. So uh, so the, the so your way into the degree, I think, is is certainly something which is is notable. So we've got a quite a flexible routes into the degree. So just to get on the program in the first place, you've got uh, what we call recognition of prior learning is an interesting feature where if you've already done some studying at another university, but you want to switch to our program, we can take account of that and we can swap out some of the modules so you don't have to do everything again. Uh, so that's a really interesting feature that you may not know about. Uh, then we've got the performance based admissions, which is another great feature on the input stage, where if you don't quite meet the criteria, the, the standard criteria, you can enter in a special mode called performance based admissions, which allows you to get onto the program and get going with your degree and uh what else uh so then so then you know once you're on the program uh there's all kinds of different ways through the program so things like uh we have specializations on the program which allow you to choose a particular area of interest which you want to sort of uh, add to your degree certificate so say for example you're really keen on ai and machine learning which a lot of people are right now of course uh, then you can actually select that as your specialism on the degree and have an additional line on your degree certificate to say that you'd specialized in that and you do a project in that area at the end of the degree uh, so that's a, a sort of unique sort of feature of the pathway that you might take through the degree uh what else um I'm just going to do, do a few highlights here anyway. I'm sure we'll dig into more details later, but uh, something else worth mentioning is the um, uh, during the process of the degree is really the flex with which you can go through. So you can go at different speeds. So, so let's say, you know, some people, I know a lot of people who are on the degree are working full time or, or part time and they just kind of want to fit it around their existing life. So we allow you to sort of speed up and slow down as you're working through the degree. Sometimes you might want to study a certain number of hours a week for, say, six months. And then you're like, OK, I've got more time the next six months. I want to speed up and you can do that. So and that's totally up to you. You know, you don't have to go through a formal process to slow up and speed down. Uh, it's up to you. So, yeah. So um, I was there's a few features then. I didn't mention the output yet. So, of course, the output uh, is what happens when you come out of the degree. And I've mentioned a bit about the certificate that you get and the fact that you know, you can get flexible certificates. But uh, yeah, um, really, we're, we're on the way out, we're hoping that you're going to come out with a really hands on skill set. That's one of the sort of really important features that, that for me personally, when we were designing the degree and, and the modules you'll receive from me as a, as a teacher, I, I, I'm really hands on. I want people to be able to make stuff and do stuff. And I, I want people to be passionate about what they're doing and to be able to make the things they're interested in making. So that's really a focus of the degree. Uh, and, and the skill set that you come out with. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That's completely, uh, you know, and actually, yes, the flexibility of the program seems to be one of the most attractive things for many of the learners of prospective students without having to compromise the quality. So that's that's really some really great insights. Now, uh, the other question has to do with, uh, we know anything regarding technology is constantly changing and evolving. So many prospective students would like to know how is the curriculum designed to ensure a well-rounded education in computer science and what core skills do students acquire through the program as well? Okay, yeah. So um, the approach to design the curriculum was originally 
uh, well there's there's a sort of lots of different sort of inputs if you like or, or things that uh, streams of information and guidance that we take into account when we're designing the curriculum and it's not just what is the coolest trendiest framework to teach right now because of course that changes and the curriculum we want it to be a bit more future proof so you know one of the things is is looking at the, the uh, students developing a wide range of skills and, and when we talk about core skills what we mean is not just that you know how to do certain things but that you're confident to learn new things okay and that's that's absolutely key uh, is that we want you to exit the degree as a very confident learner so you're like okay I, I, I learn a whole bunch of frameworks in that degree in five years time of course there'll be different frameworks that's how it goes uh, in five months time maybe depending what your area is right uh, so we, we, we're, we know that we teach so we want you to be a confident learner we want you to be ready to pick up a new framework and and so, so the core skills are sort of understanding why what goes into a framework or what goes into what what is behind it algorithmically and what are the mathematical skills you need to use these things so we kind of focus on that as well as teaching you know the the sort of big hit big hitters on on the framework front like you know say tensorflow or taught pytorch whatever it is that that, that needs to be taught uh, so yeah i mean that's that's a little insight into that another another uh, factor is uh, the benchmarking statements for computer science. So in the UK, uh, we have a, you know, a set of benchmarking statements for what should go into a computer science degree and what are the expected capabilities of a student exiting a UK computer science degree, which is what this is. And so, so, so a lot of the curriculum and, and the sort of top level learning objectives for the curriculum, so the things you can do when you exit the degree, if you've studied everything on the degree, are aligned with, with those benchmarks. And it's worth saying that we're just entering a kind of redevelopment phase where we're actually doing quite a lot of updating on the modules right now. Over the next year uh, and a half, we're going to be doing a lot of work, which is just commencing right now. And th the focus is, is to sort of realign with the new benchmark, which came out in 2022 and so we're kind of uh, sort of aligning ourselves more with some of the features of that uh, which are things are, so some of the new features i guess coming out from that are there's a bit of a focus on professional development in the new benchmarking statement so we're bringing in some more of that content into some of the modules so especially around ethics and um you know uh, diversity equity and inclusion so some we're putting some of that content into some of the modules where it's appropriate but not reducing the technical content, of course, but sort of uh, sort of wrapping it with with some of those concepts as well. So that's some of the new stuff that's coming along. But we've also got new technical content coming too. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you very much for your answer. I, I think the next question you already covered a really good portion uh, of the answer we were expecting. But yes, uh, and I might. I think there's no 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 such a thing like a formula to say we are going to be upgrading the program content you know every x amount of years but essentially what are kind of the criteria the university follows to keep the program you know stay current with uh, industry trends and technological advancements in general yeah so i mean one we we do have the 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 um the current redevelopment plan that's going in progress so students entering in october this uh, this year will actually be that's when the first new things come out so that actually is going to be brand new content coming out for you guys in october but as well as that as, as i mentioned before this kind of core skills concept which is we want you to be a confident learner so that when in the workplace when you have to learn a new framework or a new code base or whatever it is that you, you've got that confidence to sort of dive in and 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 get get busy you know roll the sleeves up and, and use the new framework whatever it is and and have that kind of core skill th set that allows you to do that that's perfect that's perfect thank you very much now we can pass into uh another uh topic that students would like to to know more about this is an online degree so students uh, would like to know more about for example what is the virtual learning uh like what kind of resources are available to students in the virtual learning environment in general uh yeah well um the degree we were the very first undergraduate degree on the coursera uh, platform and uh, so we tried really hard to push the platform as hard as we could, uh, which anyone who is working with us in the early days will know. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we've been on the Coursera platform since um, 2013, actually making content. So we 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 know we know from personal extended experience, it's a fantastic platform, and that's that's 
and that's why we're we're putting the degree on Coursera because we could have used another platform, right? Uh, and uh, so, and we we know that the Coursera platform development team is a fantastic team, and they're always pushing and, and putting new content, uh, new capabilities on there. Like for example, uh, you know, you got one of the things we really like using is the virtual labs environment. So you'll see that in some of the modules you get you work inside the browser, you can actually do your programming work inside Visual Studio Code and embedded in the browser, which allows you to more quickly get to the to sort of the point of, of executing your code uh, rather than having to do loads of configuration and setup beforehand. Uh, we also use a sort of, sort of machine learning capabilities uh, within the Coursera platform. We actually managed to deploy uh, GPT version two in inside a virtual lab in, in Coursera. So we're always trying to break it and push it as hard as we can. Uh, and so so that's one aspect of it, but it's also a really fantastic user experience uh, on the Coursera platform. So it's very sort of video oriented. And so and, and we've we've sort of aligned ourselves with that in the degree. I think there's over 300 hours of video in 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 the degree, you know, so it was a huge right. task to make all that video. And we're making more stuff. So, yeah, so you have this really um, a great experience uh, in general, your day to day. Uh, but in addition to that, there's a whole bunch of online services which are available sort of through the core University of London system. So there's a kind of student information portal and also there's the online library. I'm not sure if we got a, a question later about the online library. So uh, maybe I can talk about that later. But yeah, I mean, there's a there's a fantastic electronic library full of stuff that you can access and you can access, for example, the IEEE Explore subscription, which gives you access to the whole of that library, which is decade, you know, it's the whole history of computer science in terms of journals and, and magazines. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of that stuff in there that you, you can access. Perfect, perfect. I know the students appreciate all of the detail you're providing, you know, about the features uh, and everything they will be able to find on this degree. So thank you very much for your answer. Uh, now, um, we would like to discuss as well how does the university foster a sense of community uh, among online students? I know the answer, but I would like them to know this information from you, you know, the program director, and what kind of support services are available to help them succeed academically speaking. Yeah, yeah, great. So, so I think I'm going to talk about maybe three things here. Yeah. So, uh, so the first, so you know, obviously, when you're accessing information about the degree and you're reading about it and stuff, you might not know the real details of how things work, right? So, uh, so, so I'll talk about three things. I'll talk about Slack. I'll talk about the student support model. And I'll talk about some of the additional services that are available to support students. So number one, Slack. So Slack, uh, you may or may not be familiar with the, the sort of um, social kind of interaction platform, professional focused, uh, uh, um, you know, functionality. And yeah, so there's a whole Slack workspace dedicated to uh, degree students and we when we first deployed it we didn't really know what was going to happen with it i have to say uh it was it was you know coursera suggested you know you should have this slack workspace this was back in 2019 you know and, and what actually happened is uh the students when we got thousands of students on the degree they created this amazing community which you you won't know about until you join it and it's got all kinds of channels on there so there's all kinds of information on different modules and there are study groups and there's sort of international groups. There's like, a, I know there's a really active Vietnamese student group, for example, you know. So remember that one, I didn't mention earlier, one of the unique features of this degree is, is how international it is. We've got students in over 150 countries, I believe. So that means that when you go into that student community, you're, you're getting access to this crazy kind of, well, fantastic global network of people. So it's a real professional opportunity to network with other people set up uh, job opportunities all that stuff that's number one and you won't see you won't really find out about that just from reading stuff online okay uh, the other thing is that we have the, uh, the, the 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 support model so there's um in order to get your questions answered we have a whole network of online tutors who are experienced uh, people who sort of computer science um uh, phds and masters uh, level at least generally and they they are in the forums and they know about the course and they'll go and answer your questions about that and there's also the uh, the actual administrative support so we have an administrative support system as well which you can access uh, via email and um, the third thing 
is sort of additional services. So uh, recently we added a kind of academic uh, support service where you can actually have your work uh, feedback, academic feedback on your work in like a 48 hour time window. I think it's 48 hours, a sort of in working days. Uh, it's very fast feedback on your work as you're working on it. So if you're working on your project proposal, which is one of the bigger documents you might write, you can kind of submit that and get someone to figure out whether you're expressing yourself in the appropriate academic language and that kind of stuff. So that's a recent thing we've just added. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a few things to be thinking about, I guess. Yeah, thank you very much. And yes, actually, I've been able to to spoke with uh, current students or uh, some prospective students as well, that they have a friend taking the program and they mentioned there is a community, their community, you know, they won't be feeling alone. They have plenty of uh, resources to interact with other students, to get engaged, to collaborate on some projects and to do some networking, as you mentioned as well, share some notes, share some knowledge, really passionate community and really collaborative as well. And a global community, of course. Thank you very much. Now, um, if you allow us, uh, can we please discuss for example, any opportunities for hands-on experiences, internships, collaborative projects that are integrated into the program to enhance practical skills and industry readiness? Yeah, so uh, we don't actually have an internship program sort of integrated on the program, uh, but what we do have is a really fantastic career service, which will uh, allow you to access internships uh, beyond the program so there's so they they run regular webinars that you can just drop in to and ask questions and they have uh, presenters and things like that so there's a whole sort of additional service on on top of the degree which degree students can access and uh, um, i know uh, there's been a really good take up of that uh, since we sort of we kind of relaunched it about uh, I guess a couple of years ago now, and sort of with with a new person, uh, Liz, who's who's really brilliant and has been really driving that. So I would say that's what that's the sort of main professional uh, aspect of the degree uh, and, and hands on. Um, of course, um, in terms of as I mentioned earlier, you know the the focus for me when I when I'm teaching is I want people people to be able to do stuff after the you know I want them to be able to make stuff and build stuff and be confident learners so that's the other aspect of it of course is you know how, how we look at um hands-on work now in terms of the expertise of the faculty i'm just looking at the details of the question there yeah so you know all all the people that deliver the the, the module uh, the videos and so on are uh, mem been members of faculty some of them uh, have moved to other places now so you get taught by a range of different people it's got a very diverse faculty uh, from different places in the world and so on and they they're all faculty members at goldsmiths when they, they develop that content and typically they're sort of experts in the field although of course you know uh, you don't necessarily need to be an expert to be teaching at the level four when you first get in but as you specialize towards the level six which is the sort of final level of the degree you'll find that we've got lots of specialist modules which are taught by people who are more expert in that particular area so they they're able to deliver that that level of, of technical content so yeah sort of um you, i guess you get more general i mean as you might imagine with a degree it starts off with a sort of generalist approach and gradually zooms in uh, to the really specialist topics towards the end of the degree. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. And I think that covers, you know, all of the resources the university has to offer so a student can succeed in their program. But also there is another question regarding, for example, the career support services students could receive. So what career support services does the university provide to online uh, bachelor's degree in computer science students? How does the program prepare graduates for success in their careers or for their education? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, so again, yeah, so the careers service with the University of London is is sort of very well established and and effective piece of the organisation, which delivers these drop in webinar sessions while you're on the degree, and where you can access that. And I think it's it's really worth uh, remembering this that the the community of students is also another place to build your professional kind of network as it were so you, you can network with other students who are maybe further along in the degree because actually 
a lot of the students are already working in the tech industry, but they feel that it was necessary for them to do a degree in order to have another sort of qualification on their list to, to allow them to proceed faster and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's a really great network of students on there. It's a really great careers service. And yeah, and of course, in, you know, in the degree itself, you know, which is the main thing you'll be engaging with, uh, we, we try and keep, we've selected these particular pathways through the degree, which I think kind of allow us which sort of reflect what we think are the interesting areas uh, for, for employability, especially so and also just things that you might be interested in anyway. So just to highlight what those specialisms are, we've got a specialism in machine learning and AI. Uh, we have uh, specialism in uh, games development, which uh, you, you sort of heard about earlier, and uh, various others like web development and user experience design, and so on. So you can obviously look in the uh, prospectus to see more about that. But that's one of the other things is is we sort of want you to come out with this clear specialist capability if that's what you want, or you can just come out with a straightforward computer science degree nothing wrong with that you know and you can still uh, do a project in machine learning but, but you can kind of be more flexible about which modules you do perfect that sounds amazing that sounds really interesting to be honest and for the last question before we can move on to the program structure and some details about the application and registration process we would like to know as well how are the assessments and exams conducted for online students what will we be expecting about assessment and exams yeah, so we have, um, I think, about four major assessment models uh, in, in the program. So uh, they have all the module let, we'll talk about the final project maybe separately, but for every every module apart from the final project uh, is structured with a midterm assessment and an end of term assessment. And the variation is what the weighting of those is and what you have to do. And so it'll either be 30% on the midterm and 70% on the end of term. So that means you're doing a smaller thing at midterm and a bigger thing at the end of term, or it'll be 50-50, in which case it's equally weighted. And a typical type of coursework would be a programming assignment. So you have to construct some sort of reasonably complicated program, or it'd be a set of maths problems that you have to work through, or it might even be an essay, which you have to write, research and then write up. And then uh, at the end of term, Typically, it's either a coursework or an exam. So some modules have, say, two courseworks, one in the middle and one at the end. And some modules have a coursework, then an exam at the end. I think there are 17 out of the 30 modules have an exam at the end. And the if the exam at the end works, uh, it's, it's always weighted at 50 percent of your mark. And you have to actually take the exam in an online platform. So um, I mean, when I first sort of started working with University of London degrees, students would always have to travel to an exam centre, uh, physically travel there and sit down and take a typical uh, classic kind of on the paper exam. And then the, the exam papers would be shipped all around the world. And indeed, the very first session we ran in 2019, we did that. But then after COVID, we, we switched to pure online exams and we stuck there. And the most recent development is that the we now use a platform called Inspira, if you want to look up what that experience is. But it's basically a sort of highly secure exam platform, because, of course, one of the things people wonder with an online degree is that how do you how do I know it? It was it was that person that took the exam or whatever, you know, and all that kind of thing. So that's why we have a very secure exam platform. You have to kind of log into this thing and you take your exam and it's timed and all of that. So it's effectively the same as being in an exam hall, but with the convenience that you do it at home, of course. And that, that's how we sort of ensure the integrity of, of our exams, really. Uh, now, briefly, just the final project is slightly different in that uh, it's got, got multiple pieces that you submit. So you and it's, it's worth double the amount of all the other modules. And that's that's what you do right at the end of the degree. And the, the final project, you submit like a proposal and then you submit a draft, a work in progress, and you submit various other things, presentations in a video and ultimately a, a sort of code and a report. And that's kind of and then you also sit an exam with that. So that's the only one that sort of varies from that structure. Fantastic. Well. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matthew, for all of your helpful insights. I know your answer has been 
really helpful for students looking to join the program. Remember, we will have a live Q&A session at the end. So if you have any question for uh, the program director, please stay with us and put your questions in the chat box, labeling them for him. But once again, thank you very much, Dr. Matthew. Now, I would like to provide the audience with an overview of the program so we can have, you can have a much more clear understanding of this computer science degree. But before that, uh, we would like to poll the audience once more, just to know what kind of things you would like to see in upcoming webinars, things we don't cover, or essentially things you would like to, to see. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much for your viable feedback and answers as well. So let's begin. Let's talk about first about the duration of the program and the academic workload. The program is between three to six years, which means you can complete the degree in as quick as three years if you're studying full time or you have up to six years to complete all 23 modules at your own pace. A semester is 22 weeks long, and you can study up to four modules per semester, which is considered a full-time course load. Two to three modules is a part-time, so you have amazing flexibility to choose and vary your course load. You can even take a semester off if you need to. So whatever you decide to do, it will just determine how quickly you will finish this degree. So if you like to start with two modules in your first term or three or four, you can absolutely can. It is really up to you. I will say my majority of students who works full time in this program typically take two to three modules per term and finish in four to five years. Moving on to the curriculum, the curriculum was designed to give you a strong foundation in computer science and a specialized knowledge of topics such as data science, artificial intelligence, and web development. It covers industry and academic case studies to help you apply what you have learned in terms of real world problems. And throughout the program, you will create a portfolio of coursework and projects to present to employers. Now, in the UK, United Kingdom, a bachelor's degree is typically three years, which is why you see the program structure into three levels, level four, five, and six. As this follows the United Kingdom framework for higher education qualifications. Each module is worth 15 credits and the final project is worth 30 credits. So altogether, you will complete 360 credits to earn your Bachelor of Science in Computer Science degree. In this program, you will learn JavaScript, C++, Python, and c -shirt as well. Now, in level four, you will complete eight compulsory modules covering the fundamentals, including computer programming with a special project on web applications. And this is when you will learn JavaScript and cover the client side of web languages, such as HTML and CSS. Progressing into level five, you will complete another eight compulsory modules covering programming skills where you will learn to load JavaScript and build web server applications and data applications like SQL. Then you will mo move on to C++, which sets you up for physical computing and games development. You will tackle Python in the modules programming with data and software design, which sets you up for artificial intelligence and machine learning. And also 
we will do some work with C Sharp using Unity framework in the gaming modules. And lastly, in level six, you will complete six selective modules along with a final project that combines your knowledge and skills to create a software system in the line with your concentration. So everybody takes the same modules at level four and five, and then level six is where you differentiate. So you have time to change or register on a concentration up until you reach level six modules. If you choose to do a general route, which is a possibility, um, you have a bit more flexibility to choose your level six modules and what your final project is based on. The final project consists of both coursework and a written exam, um, including proposal, progress logs, reports, and presentation. All right. Uh, next slide, please. Now, um, this program, let, let's talk about uh, how the online format is, what is the online experience. So this program covers and is delivered entirely through online through Coursera. And it's the same degree you will receive if you studied on campus. Your final degree certificate and transcripts won't state it was online or through Coursera. It's 100% University of London. As this is an online course, no live attendance is required. With me online, you really can study at your own schedule from the comfort of your home or whatever and log on whenever you have time in the week, morning or night. In terms of time commitment, you can expect to commit an average of five to seven hours per week for one module. And it is up to you how you manage your time. Those hours includes watching pre-recorded video lectures, completing quizzes, programming assignments, readings, and peer reviews, of course. Although there are no live lectures, there are live webinars hosted by the tutors. Tutors run live webinars at different times, twice weekly. This is an awesome opportunity for you to go through coursework covered that week and receive guidance on the assessments. They are super helpful. And you will find that some live webinars, tutors will share additional insights, and you will also get to interact with your classmates joining from all over the world. So I highly encourage you to attend them if you can. They tend to host a few more webinars on the math mathematical components of the program to provide extra support, since this is quite a common concern for some students. If you're not able to attend, that's okay. Webinars are all recorded for you to watch at a later time. Aside from Coursera, you also need to regularly check your student portal through the university. The student portal is a gateway to all of your additional learning resources, which includes your virtual learning environment. And here you will find the most up-to-date information, including registration dates, exam dates, as well as wonderful resources to support your development, such as well-being material, career development exercises, and student support services, such as Talk Campus. All right. Now, if you have already taken a course on Coursera, this setup might look familiar to you. I always recommend to anyone considering starting a degree program online that they should try a course on the platform first. It's a great opportunity to get a feel for the platform before making a long-term commitment. So University of London specifically offers create open content courses. If you want to take a look, Diana will be sure, uh, will be sharing the link in the chat below. Also, there are some professional certificates on Coursera that could work towards the bachelor degree. If you want to know more in detail about these options, I encourage you to schedule a call with an enrollment counselor. We'll be sharing the link at the end of the presentation. Now, what a typical day might look like for you is that you log into the Coursera platform and you will see the courses you have registered for on your dashboard. And you will notice that the coursework is broken down into weekly pre-recorded video lecture 
quizzes, programming assignments. So as there are no live attendance required, that means that you can study at your own schedule from anywhere as long as you have a computer and internet access as well. Something to highlight is that throughout each course, you will see discussion prompts or discussion forums as you move through the content. These are check-in points to encourage you to participate and interact with peers and the tutors as well, since those are monitored by the tutors. So it's a good way for you to ask questions and get some answers if you have any questions. Exams are being taking place online. Uh, they take place from Monday to Saturday and typically two hours, multiple choice and objective base where you type your code into a text editor and they might take place at the end uh, of the term when you have finished your modules. So in September and March typically. And you're given a 24 hour window to access your exam module. Once you begin your attempt, you have the allotted two hours to complete the entire assessments. Instructions on your exams are specific to your module, so you will need to refer to your admissions um, notice as well. Now, let's talk about tuition fees. So tuitions uh, is based on your residency and not nationality, and it is paid per module to keep in mind. There are different fees based on if you live in a band A or band B or UK. If you don't know which country you, uh, country band you fall under, you can check on the university's website. Misha will be sharing uh, the link for the country bands in the chat as well, the chat. So here on the screen, this is the range from band A to band B. This is the total indicative cost of the program for all the 23 modules for the whole program, all right? It's not a year tuition fee, it's for the whole bachelor degree. If you live in a band A, the total indicative cost is 12,000 with 701 pounds, and each module is 490. And if you live in a band B, the total indicative cost is 18,000 with 887, and each module is 736. If you live in the UK, the total indicative cost is 17 and 157 pounds, and each module is, is 667. You can find details about your module fees here on the university website, and Diana will drop this in the chat below. So tuition is paid twice per year. So since you pay as you go, you pay semester by semester before the beginning of each term, mid-March and mid-September. And you only have to pay for however many modules you have decided to study in each term. You pay your tuition fees directly to the University of London through your student portal. So students can pay their fees via online by credit card, debit card, bank transfer, or flyword, and offline via Western Union, quick play, the Sterling Bankers draft check. So students can check the university website on how to pay your fields for more details. Nisha will be dropping that into the chat now. And finally, let's talk about the admission process. So there are two admission routes into the program. There is the standard entry route and the performance-based route. Given that applicants come from different countries, the university accepts qualifications from all over the world. So the best way to check if you meet the admission requirements is to go directly to the university's website and select from the, their drop-down of countries of which you have completed your education in to see what is acceptable, of course. Diana will be dropping the link um, to the university website in the chat, but still feel free to schedule a call with an enrollment counselor if you have any questions or need further assistance checking the admission requirements. We will be sharing the link at the end of the presentation. So applications are now open and will close on March 4th. To start your application, you can apply uh, online through the University of London, and Nisha will be dropping the link in the chat box now. If you're not sure as to which admission route you're eligible for, the university recommends that you apply through the standard entry route. 
And if you do not meet the standard reentry requirements, your application will automatically be considered for performance-based admission. Please ensure that you do not make duplicate entries. If you have done so, please let us know under which email address you have used. I'm going to break down a few of the application components to ensure you submit a strong and complete application. First, you will need to upload and scan copy of your ID with your name and birth date on it. Typically, your birth certificate, passport, or driver license. Second, you will need to write a proposal statement or a statement of purpose. Essentially, it's a letter you write with no more than 250 words where you express your interest, you introduce yourself, you talk about your academic background, and you respond to the question, why do you wish to study for this program? Then you will need to upload and scan copy of all of your official academic transcripts and the certificates themselves. If your documents are not in English, you will also need to provide an English translated copies. They must be translated by a certified translator, all right? Uh, also, you need to upload your resume. That is uh, highly recommended. So ensure you update all of your information and highlight any successes in your career. If you have completed any other relevant course or certificates, like the ones from Coursera or that work, you can upload those documents as well. Now, if English is not your first language, you will need to submit that English proficiency test score. Once again, you can schedule a call with an enrollment counselor if you want to check what are going to be the accepted proficiency test. If you are working in the median instruction of English with your employer over 18 or more months, you can provide a letter from your employer stating this. Or if you have a study in the past five years in English, you can also provide this to waive the English uh, proficiency test requirement. Altogether, the application should take about 30 minutes or so to complete. You will then be asked to pay the 60 pound application fee. This is not refundable and not transferable. And you will need to submit the payment and then your application will go through. All right, so let's say you have completed your application. I wanted to give you a peek behind the curtains of what happens when you submit your application on the University of London. For those in the process of applying, the deadline to submit uh, is March 4th. Remember, I highly recommend applying before the deadline as we have a new promotional offer that when the students submit their applications, they can get access to a study methods WhatsApp business platform for developers for free. So after you submitted your application, you will receive a confirmation email that your application has been received by the admissions office and a notification of your student's reference number. Each application gets reviewed by the admissions committee and you will receive communication within five to 15 business days through email. If you're missing any documents, the university will reach out to you to request for further evidence. So keep an eye out for that as well. Otherwise, you will receive a decision on whether you have been accepted through the standard entry or their performance-based route. If you do not meet the admissions requirements, the admission committee will advise you on any additional qualifications you may need in order to be eligible for the program. So after you have received your offer letter email, you will find information regarding how to log into the student portal with a new username and password to register and pay for modules and access to your orientation course. After you have paid for your modules and a month before the session begins, you will receive an email invite to link your Coursera account. You will need then to complete your orientation course, which covers everything you need to get started in the program, such as how to navigate Coursera, program policies, communication channels to seek and help, uh, seek help and connect with your peers. And you will need to pass all of the quizzes in the orientation course with at least 80% to receive access to your modules. The session begins on April 8, 2024. 
course, uh, you will receive an announcement once as soon as access to your register module begin, becomes available. If you do not receive access to your modules when the session begins, please contact the contact point for support or schedule a call with an enrollment counselor for them to guide you accordingly using the same email address register for the degree program. All right. So thank you for listening and let's open it up for a Q&A session. We'll give everyone a few seconds to submit their questions. We will try to answer as many as possible in the time we have left. So let's check for some live questions. Right. So as uh, well, I have this question. Will the degree we have internships or placements as such. Uh, Dr. Matthew already covered that question. There are no internships, but plenty of career development um, resources, all right, uh, are really good career networks and also have some projects for you to be ready for the industry, but not internships uh, such as. This one is already related to internship. We covered that. So this one uh, for Dr. Matthew, will it be possible to interact with the professors? For example, will it be possible to get a recommendation letter for an internship or for any job possibility? Uh, yeah, so in terms of interacting with the members of faculty at Goldsmiths who, who uh, yes, that happens. So you will, every module that you take has what we call a module leader and that will be a member of faculty at goldsmiths and they will run at least three webinars during the course of of the of the module where so one at the beginning sort of a welcome webinar one in the middle to prepare you for the coursework and one at the end to prepare you for the final assessment and at that point you, you know they always do a live q a so you can ask them questions and i really enjoy doing these these are sort of some of my favorite parts of, of running the modules because I, I run a couple of modules and yeah it's, it's great to meet the students and have a bit of a chat and it's, it's a more informal thing as well you know people ask normal questions but also we kind of get chatting so we had a really good chat about some of the ai stuff in my ai module recently so yeah it's really nice to meet everyone in there uh, in terms of letters of recommendation so this is a very common request and of course one of the things people will want to do when they've completed an undergraduate degree a bachelor's degree is, is then look at maybe taking a master's or even applying for a phd program and so the university of london has a system in place which allows you to get a letter of recommendation which you can use and um, people use to apply for postgraduate um, uh, study so masters and things like that uh, we we the individual academics that run the modules don't write the letter directly but there's a there's a sort of transcripts team at, at university of london who provide those letters of recommendation in addition to your regular transcript perfect thank you very much we do have some interesting question here for dr matthew uh, how does plagiarism or cheating work in code for example if i'm struggling with a method or trying to get something to work and Google uh, how to achieve something in a project and copy the code. I find, I presume there's only uh, so many ways to achieve something. Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, of course, now in 2023, it's, it's very common for people to Google things or even to, you know, look them up on ChatGPT or whatever uh, to try and get it to write some code. And the, the, the way that we, we manage that is that uh, if, if you have basically gone on to Stack Overflow or something like that and you, you've, you've copy pasted some code from there, that's OK. You can do that. We know that people do that. But uh, the, the very important thing is that you have to then label it. So you say, you know, you put a link to where you got it from. You say, I didn't write this code. Uh, I took it from here. And what we typically do in a lot of the courseworks is you have to lay, you have to label up your code to say which bits you wrote and which bits you've uh, have come from somewhere else. And so, you know, it's, there's no problem in using stuff from other people. It becomes a problem 
when you don't tell us <laughs> basically because uh, so that's how it works essentially that's the, that's the simple rule uh, you can use stuff from anywhere it's totally fine but you just need to tell us where it's come from and you know so for example if you're writing an essay and you think oh i, I don't want to come up with a definition of i don't know the uh, networking stack uh, so i want to just copy paste one that's an issue if if we then look at your document and there's some text and it says oh this has just come straight from somewhere else uh then we we then uh, that that's an issue but if you had said well here's a quote uh you know and and it's generally better to try and write it yourself you'll learn more but you you are able to sort of pull things from other places but you just have to reference them uh, yeah and, and in code yeah of course there's lots of ways of doing things actually and there are very subtle differences if and uh, in general if you're writing code I mean, back in the day when I was learning how to code, we didn't have Stack Overflow and, you know, we had to learn it properly. We had to get the manual out and, and sort of bang our head on it until we figured it out. And so who do you think is answering the questions on Stack Overflow? Where are they getting it from? You know, um, so that that's the thing. So I think in a way I would encourage you to try and, and solve it yourself because you will learn a lot more and you'll get you know, a much stronger core skill set that way. But still, if you do pull down a little uh, snippet of code from there, you just have to make sure you tell us where it came from. Perfect. Well, that was a really long answer. Much. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think they appreciate the level of detail. It is important. So thank you very much. Uh, now we had this question for you uh, again, Dr. Matthew, please, uh, um, regarding accreditation. So they want to know if the program is accredited worldwide or it is only in the UK and how cool recognition internationally could work for a student taking this program. Yeah, so uh, in terms of the sort of accreditation of the degree, so it's, um, you know, it's quality assured through the benchmarking uh, system in, in the UK. And, you know, all of our all of our assessments and things are reviewed internally and by external examiners. And when we finalise our grades, uh, we have uh, members of, of from UK uh, higher education, other computer science departments come and look, external examiners come and look at the marks and the, how we're grading people and everything like that. That's how that works. Uh, and then in terms of international accreditation, yeah, we don't currently have international accreditation, but there are some interesting possibilities there, but we haven't uh, we haven't actually uh, fully engaged with that process yet. So yeah, it could be could. It is possible that we could uh, accredit the degree uh, through ACM, IEEE or something like that. Now we have degree graduates. And so, yeah, what we're looking at at the moment is we're trying to kind of embed some of this uh, content, which might lead to further accreditation into the, the redevelopment plan. So, yeah, so we're, we're, we're interested in that, but we don't have international accreditation of that sort right now. But the University of London is a very sort of internationally recognized institution, uh, which you know, is one of the reasons why people take our degrees is because of the, the you know, people have, know that it's a, it's a trusted and recognized institution. Yes. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question. I can, I can help with this one. Um, the student asking, is asking if I transfer some credits from previous education, can I complete it in two years or sooner? So regarding recognition of prior learning, you can transfer up to 120 credits. Essentially, it's one third of the program. So if you're planning to take the program on a full time basis, you will be able to complete the program in two years. If you know, if you have the chance to transfer all of the credits from previous education at the maximum, which is 120. So it's possible to complete the program in two years, saying you have the chance to transfer all of your credits. Um. We have another question really interesting here. How much artificial intelligence tools encourage to maximize our learning path and getting on a hand to do the assignments at some parts? Uh, yeah, another, another very interesting question. So um, the this is obviously a moving target. You know, uh, the University of London is, is in the process of developing a, a full, uh, you know, policy on this and there's different aspects to it of course we accept that using artificial intelligence tools to support your learning is, is a really valid thing to do so i'll give you some examples of things that you could do which would be no problem from my perspective uh, academically speaking so for example let's say you wanted to uh, you, you wanted to read a research paper and you, you wanted to generate a summary of that so that you can quickly understand it or, or identify the main themes 
that's that's a great use uh, some uh, you can even generate exercises for yourself uh, so if you want to come up with uh, you know we chat gbt for example can generate mathematical exercises it can generate questions and challenges for you so if you if you t uh, treat it as a kind of interactive tutor type system i think it has a great value now things that are more uh, worrying from our perspective is let's say we've set you a programming assignment and you essentially go and, and use chat gpt to write the code uh, then the problem is and, and we're assessing your ability to code that's that's a bit of an issue for us because um so we, we wouldn't really want you we wouldn't accept you doing that and so and, and the reason is uh, you know if if chat gpt has written your code and it's written your essay or whatever right we should give the degree to chat gpt not you uh, and also it's worth saying that um you know everyone's got chat gpt so how are you going to differentiate your capabilities if you've used chat gpt to do your work you know so i think there are things you can use it for that help you to study so think of it as a, a study partner or as, as a sort of thing that can help you understand and, and absorb and better engage with the materials but if you're using it to do your assessments that's a problem and my general stance on, on, on AI and, and the, the recent, very recent rapid advances we've seen uh, is that if you already have a skill set, if you can already program, and I'd be programming for, for, forever, uh, you know, when I, when I go and use ChatGPT to write my code, I, I'm really very good at instructing it. I, I like to think anyway, that, that if you actually know the domain already because you've taken the time to learn it, you're going to be really good at using ChatGPT. So if you compare a person that knows nothing about programming and they go and try and use AI to, to write some code, the output will be, I think, inferior and, and not as well specified as if you've actually, that you're dealing with a person that's learned how to code. So I think, I mean, this is a question students ask me, you know, why, why do I bother? Why do I need to learn all this stuff when AI can do it? Well, it can do it, but how do you instruct it to do it effectively? Well, you have to understand the domain and that's what we're teaching you. Okay, there's a few thoughts <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that's amazing, thank you very much. And really interesting questions, by the way, from the audience. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, uh, but we are going to be still there. Feel free to scan the QR code if you want to schedule a uh, meeting with an enrollment counselor. If we have not, if we were unable to answer your question, feel free to schedule and we will be able to discuss anything in detail. A final poll, just to know if you want to be contacted by an enrollment counselor as well. And in the meantime, just thank you all of you for uh, participating in the webinar. Thank you, Dr. Matthew. It was an amazing experience and I hope you have a wonderful day, just as always. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.